untradeable items can be seen as some of the best and worst items in old school runescape as thus i wanted to dive deep into these untradeable items obtaining and showcasing every untradeable item on my untradeable equipment locked iron man welcome to life of chad when picking up the goblin staff in the chronicle i also picked up the cabbage cape the Cabbage Cape, an item initially attained during the 2016 April Fools event when players achieve level 120 of the cabbage picking skill. Overall, this is one of my favorite events that Old School RuneScape has ever created and I wish they would do this thing again. When players trained to this level, they were able to purchase the cape from Copas Varza for 10 cabbages. After the event, it was made available at Diego's store for 150 GP. It has the same stats as the colored capes and team capes, making it the current best in slot cape for my account, with a plus 1 defense to slash, cross, and a plus 2 defense in range. Now using the runes from the last episode, we ended up training our mage on some cows, and we ended up getting 20 hit points and 17 mage respectively. Now using our superior magic level, we decided to go train some Slayer, completing our 5 basic tasks so that we can earn reward points from our Slayer Master. We obtain 36 magic, 27 hit points, and 19 Slayer. Needing some more GP, we traveled to everybody's favorite alien pyramid and climbed down the doorway to obtain 60 agility. Traveling in the big spooky wilderness, we ended up going to the mage arena. We ended up purchasing 200 log runes so that we could have easy teleports when completing the beginner clues. First clue black and Charlie the Tramp decided that he wanted us to go cook a trout. So we ended up getting 25 wood cutting and 30 fire making so that we could do the sea slug quest. During the quest we ended up dropping this little kid off in the middle of the ocean. Hopefully he can swim. Quest complete and then we get 7,175 fishing XP and then we get 24 fishing. For getting I actually need the cooking level to cook the trout. I ended up getting 27 fishing before obtaining 16 cooking. We also obtained an easy casket during our journey and we didn't get anything, yeah, figured, and then in our beginner casket, nothing. Next, as the Chad we are, we wanted to become the Knight of the Noble Round Table, thus we decided to do the Merlin's Crystal Quest. During the quest, the beggar randomly asks for a piece of bread, as thus we give it to him and then the Lady of the Wake appears. She says, well done, you passed my test and gives us our new untradeable, the Excalibur. The Excalibur, a one-handed sword and quest item obtained from the Merlin's Crystal Quest. It requires 20 attack to wield and has similar stats to the Adamant Longsword, except for 6 less strength bonus and 1 more magic defense bonus. The Excalibur has a special attack called the Sanctuary, which temporarily increases the player's defense by 8 and consumes 100% special attack energy. Currently, the Excalibur is my best in slot melee weapon, surpassing the Wolfbane Dagger. For Camelot! Next, with our three keys, we were able to make one wish. Of course, we had a wish for the greatest sword of all time, the Silverlight. The Silverlight, a demon blade sword that is very effective against demonic creatures. It is first obtained during the quest Demon Slayer where it is used to fight Delrith. When using Silverlight to fight demons, the player's maximum hit is increased by 60%, which is approximately the same as a Rune Longsword. However, its accuracy remains the same. When not fighting demons or vampires, Silverlight is comparable to the Steel Longsword, with a lower strength bonus and a small additional magic defense bonus. Currently making it our best in slot item for fighting demons and vampires. Speaking of demons, there's something slightly different than a demon called a gnome. They're small creatures and they're the start of the Trinum Village quest. During this quest, we're tasked to kill the Khazard Warlord in an attempt to obtain two green balls called the Orbs of Protection. At the end of the quest, they thank us so much that they return to us. Glorious Amulet. Oh wait, that's not Glorious Amulet. That's the Gnome Amulet. And we just achieved 36 attack and 47 magic. The Gnome Amulet. Awarded to players by King Bolin after the completion of the Trino Village quest, it functions as a melee only amulet defense that has plus 6 more defensive bonus than the amulet defense. Having plus 13 in all melee defenses, but no magic and range defense bonuses. Currently this is our best in slot amulet, surpassing Gloria's amulet. Being right next to the fight arena quest, I just had to go on ahead and start this quest. So pretty much uh, we're just fighting these guys because she doesn't want her husband to die fighting them and we're that good. So what we do, we go ahead and run over to here into this little hut and we obtain some untradeable gear real quick. Actually this is the wrong hut because I can't even see it all. But um, we're going to just run over to the right hut now. 
slowly walking over there because I'm a professional, of course. Um, walking over here, opening the door, bringing up the chest so that we can unlock the next untradeable equipment of the account, which is the Kassard Armor Set. The Kassard Armor Set is a set of armor which consists of the Kassard Helmet and Kassard Armor. Both the helmet and plate body are obtained during the fight arena quest and are used primarily as a disguise. A defense level of 1 is required to wear them and is currently one of the poorest melee armors in the game, with comparable defense bonuses to bronze. The only saving grace of this armor is it has no penalties to range or magic, as well as being able to work with the Ava's attractor and accumulator, making it viable when training range or magic. Currently, this is actually our best magic and range defense armor. Now back to everybody's favorite quest, we now have to fight a giant ogre, a giant scorpion, and a hellhound before moving on. Now completing the quest, we are awarded with 2 quest points, 12,175 attack experience and 2,175 saving experience, as well as 1,000 coins which nets us 40 attack and 24 thieving. Now I decided to take a little break from uh, grinding these quests and obtaining the untradeable from quests and we thought we'd go for that rune scimitar ornament kit again and Charlie wanted us to create a leather body in order for this last step of this clue. So we're going and crafting that, going and talk to him real quick and he gives us the casket. Now let's go ahead and open this. Hopefully we obtain it. But doodle and we get Frog slippers. Now those are pretty cool, but sadly they are not untradeables, but they are a unique item. So that's pretty cool. And if you wear them, you go ribbit. Now we also got an easy clue scroll that we're about to uh, open up. Now I don't believe there's any untradeables from easy clue scrolls except for the god pages, but let's go on ahead and see. Ooh, and there we go. We got the reward casket badoodle. Ooh, and we got the bronze full helm G. Like I said, sadly it's not an untradeable, but it is a unique. So that's pretty cool. And we got another last step of this clue scroll. We're about ready to reach the final destination. We're going to open up and open it real quick. And ba -doodle. Ooh, and there we go. Ooh, a Monk's Road Top T. Again, sadly not an untradeable item. But it is a cool to have two uniques and only ten beginner treasure trails. And now back to some skilling. We ended up going ahead and grinding out some mining so we could do one other quest. If you can guess it, you're going to get a free smooch from me. And we're about to finish this. And there we go, 10 mining. Now if you guess the knight sword, you would get a big ol' smooch. But we're gonna need to cook this red berry pie. And I just burnt the last one, had to obtain all the ingredients again. So fingers crossed we don't burn this one as well. Go ahead and click on the cooking on the range. And okay, we're good. Now we can go ahead and start this quest. Now while I got some exciting mining content, mining this blue right ore for the knight sword quest, I thought I'd go on ahead and uh, answer one of the comments that was left on the previous video, which was just to showcase some of the goals of the account, everybody. Now for the early goals, I wanted to obtain full graceful as this was the best for grinding early quests and grinding quests in general to unlock some of the necessary untradeable items in the game. I want to obtain full void as it's the best early to mid game equipment for all our combat skills. I want to obtain a Slayer Helm. A Slayer Helm is necessary as it's regarded as pretty much one of the absolute best untradeables in the game. I want to obtain the Iman Staff Eye as this is I believe the best in slot mage weapon. I want to obtain the Rune Skimitar Ornament Kit because this is pretty much the best training weapon for early level melee. Now for mid game goals, I want to complete the Song of the Elves quest so that we can unlock the gauntlet as the corrupted gauntlet unlocks some of the best end game gear of the account. I want to obtain a barrow set, I want to obtain a trident, and now for end game goals, we want to obtain the full crystal armor with the blade of Salador and the bow of Ferdinand. And I also want to overall in the entire series, I want to obtain and showcase every untradeable item in old school runescape as I don't believe every item has enough recognition that they deserve. Now there's obviously going to be some goals that I missed and I'll, I'll update the list as I can think of the items. But this is pretty much what it's going to be right now. Alright now we're about ready to obtain the blue right sword but before we did I believe back in the day whenever you did this you could only obtain the blue right sword during this part of the quest and if you didn't get it before this you couldn't be able to attain it again now i believe they fixed this now but that was some cool trivia in case any of you all wouldn't know so we just obtained the blue right sword 
The Blue Right Sword is a long sword that requires one attack to wield. It is created during the quest The Knight Sword as a replacement to the one that the Squire has lost. It is attainable by giving a Blue Right Ore and two Iron Bars to Thurgo after showing him a portrait of the sword. The Blue Right Sword has the same attack and defense bonuses as a Steel Long Sword with the strength bonus of an Iron Long Sword. It is slightly worse than the Silver Light because of this and the fact that there is no attack level needed to weld it. The Blue Right Sword is sought by some lower level players at the start of the game. Currently, this is not usable during our account as we have better alternatives. Although, this is great for Fashionscape. Now, returning the only Blue Right Sword to the Squire, we complete the Knight Sword quest, obtaining 12,725 smithing XP and getting level 29 smithing. Finishing up this last level by making bronze arrows, we're going to go ahead and make this last set. And there we go, we got 10 fletching so we can do our next quest. During the quest, we end up getting naked and trading clothes with the slave. The slave robes are a set of robes attainable during the tourist trap quest. They are needed in the quest and are first obtainable by trading a full set of desert robes to the mill slave on the east side of the desert mining camp and are required to enter the slave mine. Apart from this, they're not really useful whatsoever in the account, but whenever you equip them, this happens. <laughs> Hope and master don't whip me in the morning. Alright, so we're about ready to finish the tourist trap quest and then Anna gives us a key to access the mine and the slave encampment. And then Irina gives us the ability to choose some skills for some XP. And we're going to be able to choose both of those for in fletching so that we can make our next two untradeables and this should get us the 27 fletching if i'm not mistaken let's go ahead and click that and there we go 27 fletching in another beginner clue we're about ready to finish this up on the final step again now we were using the beginner bow and this bow is really bad so i'll probably not use it but doodle and ooh, we just got another untradeable unique item on the account which is the jester cave again we can't wield it because it's not untradeable but it's still nice to have now with the XP from the Taurus Trap quest, we're going to go ahead and use this to make some blue right bolts and blue right crossbow limbs. Uh, the cool thing about blue right bolts, whenever you make them, uh, you have to actually manually do it. There is no automatic option for this. I don't know if they just forgot to do it or if this was intentional, but it's pretty cool because you can get some really good XP per hour doing it this way. And there we go. We just unlocked the blue right bolts. Blue right bolts are the second weakest type of bolts. They are stronger than bronze bolts, but weaker than iron bolts. They can only be fired from at least a blue right crossbow or better. Blue right bolts may be tipped with jade, and then jade bolts can then be enchanted to become jade bolts E. Blue right bolts slash jade bolts are the only equipable bolts at Old School RuneScape, having a plus 28 slash plus 30 range strength bonus, making these the best range ammo to be equipped in the entire series. Turning the sinew into a crossbow string, we now created the blue right crossbow. The blue right crossbow is a crossbow stronger than the bronze crossbow, but weaker than the iron crossbow. It requires 16 range to wield and can only fire bronze or blue right bolts. It has an attack range of 7, increased to 9 with long range. Currently, the blue right crossbow is our best in slot ranged weapon, surpassing the training bow, only being surpassed by the magic short bow I the crystal bow and the bow of Ferdinand. Now there is 10 unique untradeable items that have unique stats. Now sadly there was not 10. There was actually 9 because I got you. I was going for the skull scepter piece right here which would have been a great number 10 but sadly Catapapoons decided they did not want to bless me with their drop rate of a 1 in 33 and I am well over the drop rate. So we're going to have to save that for next week. If you like my content go ahead and subscribe and then go ahead and check out some of my other videos.